Hello and welcome to the Painting and Preston Seafront Master Plan Consultation. This short presentation is about 12 minutes long and has been put together to allow you to get involved with the project in your own time. The project is being run by LDA Design, a UK based design firm with an office in Exeter. The team specialises in the design of seafronts and public spaces and they are working in collaboration with Thor Bay Council. In this presentation, we'll cover five key topics. Firstly, answering the question of what is the seafront master plan. Then we'll provide a brief background on the history of painting and Preston seafronts, followed by a short analysis on the seafronts as they stand. This will allow you to draw your own informed conclusions. Finally, we'll get your thoughts on what the future of the seafront should be. So what is the seafront master plan? Well, together we want to protect and enhance the precious open space along the seafront and create a happy, healthy and vibrant place that celebrates the special qualities of Painton and Preston. We also want to ensure that any future flood defence works are guided by the local community and any impacts they have on the seafront are mitigated through design. We want the seafront master plan to be a coming together of the communities within Painton and Preston. Over the next few months, we'll be reaching out to a wide range of local groups, individuals, businesses, councillors, schools and the public to ensure the broad spectrum of the community is represented and given a chance to have their voice heard. The master plan will encompass Paint and Seafront along the length of Eastern Esplanade, right back to Esplanade Road, including the Central Greens. On Preston Seafront, the scheme encompasses the promenade and greens up to Marine Parade. To ensure that the public consultation is meaningful and can feed into the future designs, we have split the project into three phases. We're currently in phase one, where we'd like to understand the seafronts from your point of view. So we'll personally not provide our own thoughts on the current seafront in order to not lead discussions and feedback received. In phase two, we will have developed a seafront vision and guiding principles that respond to the feedback received. We'll seek your thoughts on these before progressing to phase three. Phase three will be held over the summer when we'll be providing an overview of the seafront master plan with 3D views of how the seafronts could look in the future. Before we look at the future of the seafronts though, we also find it's useful to look at how the seafronts and towns have come to be and who or what has guided their development. Well, for what's thought to be over a thousand years, Paynton was primarily a farming and fishing village as with so many towns in the UK, the arrival of modern industrialisation in the form of the new harbour and railway line saw a swift change to the rural way of life. In the mid-1800s, the area of Paynton, Brixham and Torquay became known as the English Riviera, so named due to its warm climate and the fact that the Victorian elite were unable to travel to France due to the Napoleonic Wars. The town went from a quiet fishing village to an escape for the Victorian elite, and with them came notable philanthropists and businessmen. The Redcliffe Hotel, a well-known landmark along the seafront, was built and designed by Colonel Robert Smith, who, having previously lived and worked in India, settled in Peyton in his later life. The eastern influence is still clear to see in the architecture of the hotel on the seafront today. The Redcliffe Hotel is often more associated with the Singer family, of the well-known Singer Sewing Machine Company fame, who also built and owned Oldway Mansion. Having bought the property in 1877, they had an ownership of a vast amount of Preston Seafront and proceeded to build the original seawall and marine drive. The greens at Preston were originally home to an aerodrome and housed planes that were taxied around to Paynton Beach to provide the holiday makers of day trips around the bay. This plan shows the size of Paris Singer's estate in the early 1900s, he had originally planned to build houses along the length of Preston Seafront, however in 1913 the council stepped in and bought the greens, preserving them for the public. The following images are taken from postcards of the seafront. This image shows a space that is now the cinema, an area that was once included that once included four more gardens and a pavilion on the seafront. This is the arrival space from Sands Road. This is relatively similar to what can be seen today, apart from the planting to the southern green edge. On Paynton Beach, they had lounging areas that could be used at high tide, and in the distance you can see the original pier in the background that was lost to fire in 1919. At Preston, the traditional beach huts have been, have been a staple in its history for many years, with the seafront continuing to be just as popular today. This next section provides some key analysis on the seafronts as they currently stand, and will provide you with diagrams that you can refer to when filling out the questionnaire. 
Surrounding the seafront, there are several other schemes and development opportunities that should be noted. Torbay Road is currently undergoing public consultation on a potential redesign to improve the street for pedestrians and cyclists. This overlaps with the seafront master plan in part where it meets Esplanade Road. Victoria Centre is part of the Future High Streets Fund projects and is due for redevelopment by 2025. The Fragrance Group is currently on site, redeveloping the hotels either side of Garfield Road, and the southern portion of Paynton Harbour has been identified in a neighbourhood plan as a potential site for a future water sports hub. Connecting to Preston, the Council recently undertook a public consultation on the proposed pedestrian and cyclist improvements to Marine Drive. There may also be a potential change of use for the northern toilet block on Preston Green. The vehicular movement around the seafront has eight key features. Payton Seafront has 209 parking spaces along the promenade, one disabled, dis disabled parking space and loading space in front of the pier. There are regular bus stops on Esplanade Road and Marine Drive linking Preston through to Yelberton. Paynton Seafront uses one-way vehicular movement which stems from pier approach and turns either east or west along the promenade. On Preston there are 41 parking spaces and two disabled parking spaces and two-way movement on Marine Parade with cars turning at its far end. Movement for cyclists along the seafront has five key features. On Paynton there is contraflow cycle lanes which sit within the carriageway allowing northern and southern movements. There are key links stemming from the seafront south towards Goodrington Beach and west along Sands Road and Torbay Road. On Payton and Seafront, Payton Preston seafronts, there is one set of cycle stands on each. Along Preston Promenade, cyclists can currently share the use of the promenade or the segregated north-south route along the western edge of Preston Green. Preston also links the Pollocan Beach to the north along Marine Parade. This link is part of the southwest coastal path which also runs along Paynton Seafront. Some of the key features we've identified for pedestrians are that there are two controlled crossings to Esplanade Road. These are where pedestrians can cross with stopped traffic. All other crossings on pedestrian road are drop curves and tactile pavers, so pedestrians don't have priority over car users. At, along the beach edge, there are regular stepped access points to the beach, and there are currently four ramped access points to the beach with two designed specifically for accessibility purposes. At Preston, there are two zebra crossings to Marine Drive, which give pedestrians priority over road users. There are two ramped access points and regular stepped access points to the beach. When looking at the uses surrounding and within the seafronts, it's worth noting that the primary use along the landward edge of the seafronts are hotels, along with restaurants and pubs. All of the greens on St. Paynton Seafront are used for events, with most of the activity occurring on the northern and central greens. Along Paynton Seafront, there are summer kiosks which are in place for only part of the year, along with permanent cafes at the Geo Play Park, Pier Approach and on the pier itself. The cinema building also provides space for a restaurant adjacent to the Geo Play Park and a cafe above the Esplanade. Both seafronts have two public toilet facilities on each. The key use along Preston is currently the beach huts, which are located on the promenade itself and extends along Marine Parade. Many of these are only in place for half the year and for the rest of the time they are stored elsewhere. Preston also has a cafe located centrally to the seafront and a restaurant on its southern edge. Here we've mapped the play facilities on the seafronts and within the surrounding parks and green space. The Geoplay Park is the only play facility on the Paynton Seafront, with the next nearest play, playground located within Victoria Park, a seven minute walk away. To the west of the seafronts, there are BMX and skateboarding facilities available within Parkfield Torbay, and there is a formal play area within Preston Green, along with outside exercise equipment. This final graphic shows the various events that occur on the seafront. These generally occur between the months of April to October. Lastly, we want to provide you with some overarching questions to get you thinking about the different aspects of the seafront. These generally link with a questionnaire on the website, so you could view this whilst filling out the questionnaire as a reminder of the different topics. Should paint and greens connect better with the harbour? Does the town centre slash Torbay Road need a better connection to the seafront? Paint and pier is a cherished asset. Should the pier approach be a better arrival space? The seafront has lots of parking. Is it in the right place? Is there enough slash too much?
do you think the greens have the appropriate type of use? Is there enough opportunity to use them during the winter? The Geoplay Park is a much loved family attraction that's looked after by the community. Is there anything that can improve it further, such as improved lighting or a better arrival space on the seafront? Do the seafronts need more informal play opportunities? Does the seafront need better signage and wayfinding? We'd like to know your thoughts on the seafront shelters uh, to both seafronts. Are there enough seating opportunities along the promenades? Are they good enough quality? The beach huts epitomise the Preston seafront. Do they have enough space? Should they be there year round? What do you think about the character and quality of existing seating, litter bins and lighting? Finally, is there a lack of biodiversity along the seafront? Should there be more seafront planting? So what happens next? As mentioned, please follow the link to fill out the questionnaire alongside this presentation. On Saturday the 12th of March, LDA Design will be holding your seafront walk and talk in the morning. Everyone's welcome to join and would love to discuss the scheme further. Thanks so much for watching today. The next phase of the scheme will be released between April and May when we'll be reaching out for your thoughts again on the developing scheme.